34. Use the standard free energy data in Appendix G to determine the free energy change for each of the following reactions, which are run under standard state conditions and are at 25 degrees Celsius. Then we have to identify is either being spontaneous or non-spontaneous at these conditions. Okay, so we have our balance reaction. CaSO4 to H2O, so we have a hydrate here, yields just calcium sulfate, CaSO4 solid, plus two water vapors, H2O gas. Now we want to find that free energy change. Remember, free energy change is a delta G, right? The change is always a delta value, and free energy gives free energy. That's the G. Now, since we're using standard values, we're going in the back of a textbook, we're searching for delta G notch. Anytime that you see that notch in the upper right-hand corner, that just means that it's standard, and that we're taking values from the back of a textbook. And that's what I did. I went in the back of the textbook to find out what the delta G values for each component is. Now, what are we going to do with these delta G values? Well, there's an easy formula to find the whole free energy change. It's this formula right here. It's right there, right? Delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, equals to the sum, which is just addition, right? So it's the sum of your delta G of your products minus the sum of the delta G of your reactants. Now, are these values going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, that goes by the balanced equation, specifically the coefficients in front of your components. Now, for the CaSO4 2H2Os, there is only one of them. Keep in mind that this is a hydrate and the two in front of the water is not the coefficient for the entire hydrate. It's in front of the salt, the ionic compound. There was nothing here, so that's a one. Calcium sulfate, there was nothing there, so that's a one. And then you have two H2Os. For each number, you're going to multiply that value by the number that's from the textbook. So I would do one times negative 1791.45. It's going to be the same number, but I'm just trying to show you because over here, when you have two H2Os, you're going to take this value and times it by two. And then you have one CaSO4, so I'm just going to times that by one. Now it's still the sum, which means you have to add up your sides. Literally, the product side said CaSO4 plus H2O. So I have to take this value and add it to this value. On the product side, since there was only the one hydrate, there was no plus something else, I don't have to add this side up. So this number would be exactly the same, negative 17, whoop, what's going on there? There we go, 1797.45. And then now I'm going to just go to my calculator to find out what this is. I could plug this in in one shot. I'm going to say negative 1322. You could say plus zero, but that's the same exact thing plus two times negative 228.59. And I get negative 1779.18. Okay, now I have my two values that I'm going to use in my equation. So I have delta G for the whole entire reaction equals negative 1779. 0.18. I'm going to say minus the reactants, which is a negative 1797.45. Minus a negative is plus a positive, but you can write this into the calculator. The calculator will understand what you're trying to do, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So my delta G, my free energy change would be this value. So I'm just going to press enter to get it back minus a negative 1797.45. And there we go. We get 18.27. The units for your free energy change is in kilojoules because you're taking your, your delta G formation, kilojoule per mole, and you're timesing it by those numbers in the front, the coefficients. Those are mole values. So the moles cancel out and you're just left with kilojoules. And that's the meaning behind that. So that's the delta G value, 
18.27 kilojoules. And now we just have to make sure that we are good with sig figs. This is to the hundredths place. This one is only to the tenths place, and this is to the hundredths place. Your answer, since we're just subtracting and adding, right, just adding and subtracting, has to be to just the tenths place, because I see that one of my numbers is just to the tenths place. So 0.27, this rounds up to a three. So it'd be 18.3. Now we just have to find out, is this spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Well, that's this information down here. Anytime you have a delta G of less than zero, AKA a negative value, your reaction is gonna be spontaneous, which means that it doesn't need any additional extra energy to produce your product, it's just gonna go. But on the flip side, if your delta G is greater than zero, AKA a positive, that means that it's non-spontaneous. It needs that extra push from an outside external source to get, you know, to get it going. In this case, it's just 18.3, so that's a positive value. So positive means it needs that extra push. This is non-spontaneous. And now we are done with our question. So I'll box that off. There we go. And we're good. What do you think? Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you guys are having a great day. Keep studying hard. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.